Hello, this is Chris Sartorial. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to draft a woman's no-dart sloper, suitable for a loosely fitted woven blouse or a knit top. I have been asked many times to demonstrate a no-dart sloper for a blouse. There are many inherent difficulties in doing so, but I'll go ahead and demonstrate at least one way to do it. I'm going to start with our blouse sloper that we drafted with darts. This one still has the uh, bust dart in the side seam, whereas the back has the shoulder dart now rotated to the shoulder. I'm going to start by tracing partway around my back blouse sloper. And you're going to need, if you're dart is now in your shoulder as it is here, you're going to need to rotate that out back into your armhole. I'm going to draw a little bit of my armhole. And then I'm going to close this dart of the shoulder and open it at the armhole. This is going to make the armhole a little, about a half inch longer and more relaxed and loosely fitted, but that's what we're going for, a less fitted blouse. If you have seen someone, or you may have seen someone demonstrate removing a shoulder dart by coming in here at the side, the width of the dart, and then blending the armhole and angling the shoulder seam. Do not do this. It's bad. Bad pattern making. And here's why. In order to do so, you must come in at the across back. And that's a crucial point of measure. If you fitted your sloper properly, you have just enough room back there. Whereas now you've taken a quarter inch out here, which is a total of minus a half across the back. That's going to make it tight across the back, especially if you have a sleeve sewing into this armhole. And second, look what you've done to your back shoulder slope. After you rotate your dart out, you can see where the true shoulder slope is. And this is really, really low. In fact, you've taken about three quarters of an inch out. This is steep and this will really screw up the fit of your shoulder. Don't do it. Go ahead and simply rotate the dart into your armhole. You will have to live with a little more of a relaxed fit in your armhole, but that's suitable. You're never going to get a fitted garment without darts or seams, so just uh, know that, that your garment is going to be more relaxed fit, more relaxed and fit. If you remember when we drafted the bodice sloper, I shifted the side seam about a quarter inch to the back. And that's typical for a fitted woven woman's garment. The side seams are slightly to the back to allow more room across the front. Well, in this case, because we're eliminating darts and fitting, I want to make the across chest and sweep about the same front and back. So I'm going to add that quarter that we took out and shift this a quarter inch outward. That will make our, our measurements equal front, the front and back 
gist. If your patterns are, your slopers are already equal, you can omit this step. Now I simply need to blend these gaps in my back armhole. Use your French curve if that helps you. You will also, if your side seam is curvy like this, you may want to straighten it more, especially if this is going to be in a woven garment. If you're using a stretchy knit, you can leave the curviness in. And of course, if you're making this in a stretchy knit, you'll probably want to take some of your ease out and make the whole thing a little smaller. Uh, smaller through the chest and sweep, a little narrower through the arm, through the uh, shoulder. You may want to raise your armhole to make the armhole a little smaller as well. But we're doing it in a woven, so I'm keeping it fairly I'm not reducing it at all. And in fact, you may consider adding additional ease if you're cutting it in a woven. I'm going to bring out the side seam about a quarter inch and blend it to the hem. This is my new side seam, slightly straighter. So this pretty much finishes my back. I'm going to simply trace off the back at the center back and side and bottom. But it traced off around the bottom and side, and I can fetch my front blouse sloper, match it up at the center front and bottom. I can trace off my neck and shoulder. Now, if you'll notice I've traced these off, so that means that the high point shoulder to waist measurement for the front is exactly the same as the back. Those of you who have a longer high point, front high point shoulder to waist in the front than you do in the back, in other words, if you are a woman who has a fuller bust or the person you're making the garment for has a fuller bust, you have a big problem because it is virtually impossible to fit properly without any darts. I strongly recommend you keep the bust dart in place. As you're making clothing for yourself, you're custom making it, you might as well fit it properly and leave the bust dart in, even for a knit, because most knits do not stretch. They may stretch horizontally. They often don't have a lot of vertical stretch. And you need quite a bit of vertical stretch in order to go over the bust if you're trying to eliminate a bust dart. There are other ways to, uh, to work around it, which I'll discuss, but I don't necessarily recommend them uh, for this process. Um, so in this case, your length of your front and back are going to be the same, or at least you're going to start out with them the same. I'm going to now use my French curve. Let's measure our armholes back and forth. So, my back armhole measures about 10 and a quarter. It's bigger than our previous one because we, again, we rotated a dart into it and we also shifted the side seam out. And our front armhole measures 10 and three quarters. So that's a half inch bigger than the back. And we can't keep it that way. The front armhole cannot be bigger than the back armhole. That, that uh, messes up the balance of your armhole as well as any sleeve that you're going to sew into it. They need to be the same, uh, ideally the front armhole slightly less, but because we're doing a very unfitted or loosely fitted garment, 
they can be the same. So how do we shorten this armhole in the front? There are a number of ways to do it. If you have a working with a stretchy knit or a very supple uh, uh, woven fabric, you can sometimes steal a little out of your shoulder slope, angle it down about a quarter inch here. Again, that will work with a uh, stretchy knit or a supple woven, but it won't work for a crisp woven. So in this case, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do that. You can actually shorten the whole thing. So, and take that half inch out. That's frequently done in men's shirts. Men's shirts often measure slightly shorter in the front than they do in the back. You can do that. I don't recommend it because it can cause your front to hike up. But if you are you know, a little fuller in the front or you have a longer high point shoulder front and back, you may, you may have to do that, be, but be aware that your blouse is going to hike up in the front. Again, another reason why I don't, I don't recommend doing without the bust dart uh, for a fuller busted fit, uh, because that will virtually, there's no, virtually no way to do it without causing some hiking up of the front. One thing you can do also, as I've seen done, you'll go, you can take it out here, take your half inch out here, and I've seen where you can, and you shift it by taking it down to the bottom and then curve your side seam. Again, that works if you have a drapey uh, woven fabric, but in a crisp one, it will not work. It also will not work if you're cutting this in a horizontal stripe or plaid, because that will cause your stripes or plaids to dive into your hem. So if we don't do this, and if we don't do this, what else can we do? Um, here are a couple of things. You can actually shorten a quarter of an inch here. I'm raising this up a quarter. I'm gonna blend it. So that has shortened my armhole a quarter inch. And I can put a notch here, maybe a notch here. Put the same notches in my back. Maybe three inches up. It doesn't have to be exactly three inches, but that's just what I'm doing here. What you'll do when you're sewing, the front is longer than the back between these notches, and you'll have to ease this in when sewing the front into the back. Or if you're working with a knit, you're more likely to slightly stretch the back to sew to the front. Another thing you can do is you can put a couple of notches in your armhole. I'm going to notch this one at two and a half. And I'm going to put another one at four. And you'll place the same corresponding notches on your sleeve, except that the distance between your notches will be about a quarter inch shorter in your front sleeve cap than it is in your armhole. So you'll be drafting your sleeve to be slightly shorter along the front cap than the armhole. And again, that will force you to squeeze this in when you're sewing your sleeve to your armhole. In this case, I'm doing a little bit of both. Now I'm going to add some allowances to these, uh, cut them out and sew them up. Here is the blouse. As you can see, I've sewn a sleeve into the right side, just to show you what, uh, how it looks. As you can see, the fit is a relaxed one, but it still sits well on the shoulder, and the sleeve still hangs well. 
You may not be able to see it, but there is a little puckering here where the front is being eased into the back at the side. That's because muslin is a, not a very forgiving fabric. It doesn't like to be eased in. But if this was cut in a more supple fabric, you would not see that uh, puckering. And it hangs pretty level. As I mentioned before, if you are someone who has a fuller bust or a longer front to waist high point shoulder than the back, I strongly urge you to keep the bust dart. That will allow you to keep the blouse level without it hiking up in the front. Give this a try, and uh, I appreciate your comments. Thanks.